Good evening. Thank you for coming back to Question and Research. Make sure you subscribe, hit that bell notification, also comment and like. Also follow me on Instagram and the link should be in my description. Today's Black History Moment is Rube Foster. His full name is Andrew Foster, but they nicknamed him Rube. He was born in 1879 and he passed away in 1930. Now he was one of the first generations not born into slavery. Slavery ended in 1865. Uh, he also experienced poverty during that time after, you know, slavery was abolished. And he also had, um, he had siblings as well that suffered from tuberculosis. So what was instructed to him not to catch tuberculosis is to stay outside. Um, I don't know what the link was with tuberculosis and being outside, but when he was outside as a child, he developed um, a liking towards baseball. Eventually, he ended up dropping out of school at the, in eighth grade, and he decided to pursue a full career in baseball. Um, and he was he went with the Fort Worth Yellow Jackets. Also, a few other teams that he was with. He was with the Hurling Giants, Philadelphia, Cuba X. He won forty four games with them, X Giants, and the New York Giants. He also was married, but they said they didn't have any record of his marriage certificate. Um, they don't know if it was in Illinois or Texas if they claim that they got married. He also had two children. Also, he was 6'2 and 200 pounds. Um, when he was with the New York Giants, he was a manager and a pitcher. So he was a player manager. He was in the dugout, but he also played. The record for that season for 1905 was 51 to 4. So you can see that he had many talents. Also, um, he just had he was just a, to me an ambitious person, and I feel like he was likable and respected because of of what he he did. He's known as the black father of baseball. He also worked in the front office as well. He also was uh, with another Giants team in 1907, and they won 110 games. And I believe that was the Chicago Giants. Um, he won the title for the Chicago City League title. So he was also known for his intimidation, psychology, speed, and the brunt and run. In 1909... He had a leg injury, so therefore the team did not advance to be a team in Indianapolis. But the next year, he came through, and they won. So eventually, he had other aspirations, and he decided he wanted to form a team inside the new, you know, he wanted to form a team. So he called it the Chicago American Giants, and the record for that year was 128 wins and six losses. He also developed a partnership with the White Sox owner, Charles Comiskey. Now, if anybody know anything about the south side of Chicago, you have the Sox and their stadium used to be called Comiskey Park, and then it eventually changed to, it was the south side park, but it, it was Comiskey Park, then it changed to U.S. Sailor, then that went out of business, and now it's called Guaranteed Rate Field. So um, that's a little bit of its own history right there. So the Chicago American Giants was a prominent black baseball team and he focused mainly on operations. He started to phase himself out of actually being like a player manager and he just wanted to focus on the operations of it all. And he wanted a national black baseball league. That's what he wanted. Like he didn't really see too many of that because at this time, you know, it wasn't really a lot of friendliness or integration for black people to be associated into mainstream or white um sports so that's why the you know black people have their own league so around this time in 1919 this is when the race riots happened in chicago and so he was trying to form a league of his own for you know black people and he talked to a couple of his his black peers about it 
And they express their concerns how they do not like to be treated by their white counterparts. So that may gave him more fuel to burn, made him more persistent, more determined to push this through. And he put the paperwork through to um, get this, the, the um, Negro League started. So the new league included teams in Dayton, St. Louis, Detroit, Kansas City, Cincinnati, and Indianapolis, and two teams in Chicago. So, um, that, that's very no, um, noble and, and noticeable in history to me. When I found out that Rube Foster was in baseball, now I'm not really a big sports fan, but I think sports is exciting. Um, what I found very interesting, I couldn't help but think about Moneyball with Brad Pitt. And how he, even though he didn't play the game of baseball, he hired somebody as a statistician to move players around. And you saw more of the business side of it. And to me, Rue Foster had a business mindset. When he realized he needed to get out of the field and be more operations and see how to move things objectively, he did that. Um Unfortunately, he passed away at the age of 51. He was exposed to some gas, and then he was sent to um, asylum. So he died pretty young, pretty young. And I also have a quote. I haven't did a quote in a while, but I also have a quote by him that I will read. Do not worry. Try to appear, appear jolly and unconcerned. I have smiled often with the with the bases full with two strikes and three balls on the batter. This seems to unnerve, and that's Rube Foster. So thank you for joining me for this Black History Moment on Rube Foster. Tomorrow I will have somebody else. And make sure you subscribe. Make sure you comment. Make sure you like it. Turn on your notification bell. Also follow me on Instagram. And you can... You can follow me and make comments there as well. Thank you and have a great night.